Today, I want to introduce you to something called a commonplace book. A commonplace book is a very old uh, sort of thing. It's a good habit to keep. Uh, it's something that I've been doing on and off um, for over a decade now when I was introduced to it uh, when I was an undergrad. Um, and I want to introduce you to this practice, tell you a bit about a commonplace book, and show you how I would set one up in order to really get the most out of it. Um, you know, one, one thing that I want to note up front is that commonplace books are really a place for collecting thoughts about books and about media that you're consuming or maybe um, ideas that occur to you, but they are not places um, for that kind of long form uh, reflective writing that you would maybe put in a journal. And I would also add though that they are not like these, these note-taking systems that one sees on YouTube all the time you know, using Rome or Obsidian or building a second brain, any of that stuff. A commonplace book is a repository. It's like the first place where you put some ideas down based on what you're reading so that you can go back later. And I want to say the real value in a commonplace book is that you will go back and review it and you'll look at it. So this really is just a, a book. It is made by a company that I can't remember. I think it's a Japanese company, um, maybe uh, Perpenep. I can't remember if that's, oh no, it's it's Kokio. And then Perpenep, I believe, is the kind of paper. Now, I like this. I believe this is an A5 book. Um, that's a very common size that you're gonna find if you're not using um, basically American measurements for things. Um, an A5 notebook, to me, kind of threads that needle between being portable and um, being too small. So uh, A5 seems pretty good. I can throw it in a bag. I can even carry it around if I want. It might be too big for you. You might decide you want something a little bit smaller, like maybe like a little field notes book or something like that. You can find lots of them online. I'm not gonna put any links to anything in the show notes today. Um, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Um, I just think that you could go and find something and maybe just play around with it. And if there's a stationary store near you, just go and hold them in your hand and see what you like. Um, when I'm choosing a book, I typically look for a couple of features. Um, one is that the binding needs to be decent because this thing's going to get torn up. Um, it's going to get used a lot. And so uh, you really should uh, get something that's going to hold up. Um, the second thing is that um, I really like dot grids, which can barely show up on camera sometimes. I like dot grids because they provide um, some structure, um, but less structure than, say, a really full line grid or just lines. So it helps me write evenly and write on the line, but also means if I want to sketch something out really quickly, like draw a diagram or something, which I often do in my notes, um, really the dot grid is, is the preferred method. Um, the third consideration that you're going to want to take into account is um, the paper type. Now, this paper is a little toothier. Um, and it's thicker, and I chose that paper for a reason. Um, you see, I write with basically three different kinds of utensils or um, instruments, I should say. One of them is I, I sometimes use a mechanical pencil, and a toothier line for your mechanical pencil or a toothier piece of paper, it's going to help you get better lines and it's going to feel better. Um, you know, I also on occasion will use a lead, a lead holder, which is basically like a mechanical pencil that you have to sharpen. Again, a toothier line there um, can look a little bit better. But if I'm not using a pencil, then I'm I'm probably going to use a fountain pen for a lot of these things. This is one of my favorites. This is a Pilot Custom uh, 823, um, and I really like this one. I don't know if I have ink in it actually, um, but if I did, um, you know, I would write here. Oh, great! And I like the toothiness here as well. Um, but also, if you write with fountain pens you need to worry about bleed. And while there is a little bit of bleed there, it dries fairly quickly. And it it only barely shows through into the next page. So that's definitely something you wanna keep in mind. Um, and then finally, I'm, I, you know, when I, when I purely need uh, convenience, I use these like brush pens. This is from Tombow, but you know, you can get lots of other ones. And those are thicker as well. You don't have to worry about bleed as much with these. Um, but maybe showing through, you do have to, or I should say feathering, right? It's not, it's not bleeding if it's on the same page. It's, it's feathering, you know, 
they, these just doesn't feather. So um, Kokio makes good paper, but lots of other companies make good paper. Um, and you really don't need to worry too much um, about that. Just maybe if you can try something out, like add a stationary store to use a sample or something, that really is going to be your best bet. And so I would, I would recommend just maybe giving that a shot or um, trying to find that if you can. Um, I think that for the rest of the video, I'll just use a fountain pen. I'll use this pilot and I'll talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, how I would set up one of these notebooks. Now, I think there's kind of a big distinction in how you can use a commonplace book that might be sort of a dividing line, right? Um, and the truth is I like both styles of using a commonplace book. And so I don't think it's a big deal and I don't think you need to choose, but having a little bit of organization can be nice. That distinction really is between having full book notes and just collecting quotes. Now, if I'm reading a book, um, and in fact, I have one on my desk here. Let me just pull it out. Um, right now, I am reading A Secular Age by Charles Taylor. And if I am reading that book, and that's a pretty intense book, you could see lots of um, little tabs saying I have notes. Um, if I were going to read it in this, uh, if I was going to take notes about it in this notebook, I would want to collect all of my notes about a secular age in one place. And so I would just start by creating a book page. Now, I actually um, don't plan on writing notes in this one. This is a new book. This is a new commonplace book. And I already have uh, one that I'm finishing up um, for the book on Taylor. But I think the next book I plan on reading is by Judith Butler. And it's Gender Trouble, right? So for me, I would just write... Gender Trouble by by Judith Butler, and then maybe draw a line under it or something like that to say, this is where all of my notes about gender trouble are going to go. Those notes there could go multiple pages. In fact, I have a feeling with that book, it's famously difficult. It could take, you know, five or six pages because I'm going to have to really work out some thoughts. Um, about it, or I'm going to be sort of trying to interpret the quotes that I select. Um, after I have chosen um, that book, um, and I'm going to switch pens because uh, that's writing a little dry, probably need to clean it out. You know, one of the things that you're going to do is you're actually going to write your quotes um, underneath, right? And um, to start your, your book notes. And uh, you can create little subheadings if you'd like. You could write chapter one, chapter two, something like that. I don't typically break it up by chapters, but if I am going to write it down, I would write, say, you know, um, page three, right? And then I would write down a, a quote. Let's hope I'm going to have a, a quote from page three of Gender Trouble, or else I'm going to need to use some whiteout. Um, I would try to actually write out the quotes by hand. Um, I think that is important. That's a really good thing for um, accessing um, or sort of helping to remember um, content is actually to write it by hand, not to copy and paste it, not to just repeat it in your mind, but to actually write it by hand. That can be really crucial. And I would recommend uh, doing that. And then maybe I'll find some way after I've written my quote, maybe I'll block it off and I'll maybe write a box around it or I'll do some other thing here and then I'll be able to write my own thoughts. Um, I, I actually tend to use both cursive and sort of um, block letters uh, quite a bit in my writing um, because I just go back and forth. My handwriting is not very good for either, so it doesn't really matter for legibility. Um, but one thing I might do, for instance, is write with block letters for the quotes and then cursive for my notes. Because with block letters, I go a little slower um, and I am being a little more careful. Uh, and then uh, for my notes, like my own thoughts, um, those are kind of stream of consciousness really quickly or trying to understand it. And maybe that I don't need to be as careful about. I can make more m mistakes and I feel fine making mistakes with cursive. It's a, it's a little more forgiving, at least the way I do it when I'm writing for myself. Um, that's the first thing you want to do um, is just understanding how to uh, set up your, your book notes section. Um, but the next part is you might just want to collect quotes. So I'm going to go see a lecture um, on September 19th here in Austin, uh, and I'm going to see a, um, a speaker come and talk, and I'm probably going to write down some thoughts that he has. Uh, and, and I want to put that in my commonplace book too. 
but I don't want to put it here with my book notes. It's a little bit different, right? And so here, um, you know, I might just have a place where I've marked off. I use a bookmark to just see kind of roughly where I am. This is a free bookmark from a local bookstore. Um, and then maybe I'll just write here, September 19th. Um, and then maybe I, I would write the person's name here and I would write maybe the title of the talk. And then I would just write the quotes there that I could. Obviously that's not gonna be perfect, because I am getting the quotes um, sort of as he's saying them. Um, but that's going to at least let me write down some thoughts, some quotes, and I'm going to collect them. Um, you could also just collect quotes from little things you've read, like an article or maybe a selection from a book a friend shows you, something like that. And those would all go here. This is much less organized. Um, but, you know, give yourself about half the book. Um, or maybe a third, depending on how much you think it's going to, you know, your distribution is going to matter. Uh, with a lot of things with commonplace books, in fact, um, it's really up to you. Uh, and you're going to need to figure out what works best for you. I, I would stress sort of two final points. One of them is um, don't worry about a system. Uh, this system, as you can see, is incredibly minimal. I'm basically saying divide your book into two things, maybe have some formatting to help you read it. That's my whole system. I don't have a system of using metadata tags in a digital database, and I don't have a system of um, using cross-references or something like this. Um, this is just a place for you to work out your thoughts um, as like a first pass. You will do deeper, more reflective reading and writing later in another place. This is just a thing that gets you started. Um, so, so just don't stress about systems. People who stress about note-taking systems and productivity systems are some of the worst note-takers and least productive people that I know of because all they want to do is talk about productivity and they don't actually get anything done. So I would just say don't stress about your system. And the second point is um, you should just write. Sometimes when someone cracks open a new book like this, um, they feel like it's just so kind of clean and pretty that they don't want to mess it up. Right. And so one way to mess it up up front so then you feel fine just writing in it is to just do some scribbles. Right. Uh, you can see I do not have this hang up, but I might have at one point in my life. Um, I definitely had it about physical books. Um, I hated to take notes in them. So I would say um, just start writing. Do whatever you can um, to just start getting your thoughts and these quotes down onto the page. Um, I've been using commonplace books for about 10 years on and off. I have not used them consistently. Um, but one of the great things about having them is it means I have these notebooks that I keep um, in, a, in a trunk, actually, uh, like a wooden chest. Um, and if I want to go back and see what I was reading five years ago, I can just go back and look and I can see my thoughts. They're not always pretty. I don't always like them, um, but it's, it's useful to have that. And I think if you're someone who's kind of engaged in a, a sort of intellectual vocation of any kind, whether that's a vocation where you're paid for your intellectual labor or it's a vocation where you just feel called to do it, um, this kind of practice, keeping something like a commonplace book, is going to be a really great step for you.